So you've downloaded some stock footage, but it's on a white background or a black background and you want to use it in your movie. Pop quiz, Hotshot. What do you do? What do you do? You key it out and hit film, and here's how. Today we're going to be looking at how you can extract fire or smoke or things like that from a dark or white background and then place them onto something like a light background, a daylight shot like this, or a night darker background like this shot. We've got some fire here, really cool slow motion explosion, and we've also got some smoke, both of them against a solid black background. So to get started let's put the night shot into a comp and then add the fire. Now the first thing you ever do when you do visual effects is try and add fire or explosions onto a background and the normal way to do this would be to change the blend method so you could click on that fire and then select a blend method like add or screen. I'll select add. What you can see here is it has made the black transparent but it's also massively overexposed the lighter areas of the fire against the lighter areas of the background and pretty much everything else has some level of transparency in it. It doesn't look that great. It gets even worse if we place it against a light background like this day shot. Here everything is overexposed, you can't even make out it's an explosion anymore. So we could try and change this by going with the screen, but actually in the daylight scene you see even less of it. But in the night scene it does work a little better, but we still have some overexposure and a lot of transparency. Basically we have very little control. So what can we do? Well, first of all, let's select the fire and change it back to a normal blend method. So all that black's come back. And now we're going to select the demult effect. What this has done is it's removed all the black from the image and made it transparent. So where there was solid black, it's become completely transparent. But where there's only partial black, it's become semi transparent. This has allowed the really bright parts of the fire to remain very, very solid but then all the other areas are becoming varying levels of transparency and it does work quite well. And this will work against both the day and the night background. What it doesn't have is much control. If we want to control things, and I recommend that you do, you want to try the luminance key. So immediately this has removed all the dark areas because we have it set to key out darker so the dark areas get removed. If you were to have something against a white background, say like blood or something like that, you could change it to key out lighter this tool gives us lots of options, so what we can actually do is move the threshold so that we actually bring some of the darker areas back. As you can see, this also brings back the black, but we can switch to the view map mode and see what is opaque and what is transparent. We've got a really harsh edge here, so we can use the tolerance control to bring in some of those mid-tone shades. Of course, by doing this, we then need to change the threshold so that we still get a black background, which means that area will be transparent. But it does give us control of the intermediate shades, which means we get a nice solid looking effect with smooth gradients and nice edges. Now, what is evident here is actually that the edges have some black coming into them. And this is even more evident with the smoke effect. And I'm going to add this smoke effect and I'm going to use the luminance key on it. So I'm going to add the luminance effect onto a frame that has quite a lot going on so we can easily see what's happening. Straight away it has removed the black yet again, so we're going to have to alter the threshold and the tolerance to get a smooth graduation. As you can see there's loads of detail in the dark colours here, so we're going to try and retain as much of that as possible. Nearly there, just get the blacks into black. Something like this looks good. But when we come out of the map view, we can barely see any of this detail that was in the darker areas, and this is because it's also being affected by the black that it was against. And we have another effect we can use here called Remove Color Matting. If we drag on that effect, immediately the effect becomes brighter and we start seeing some of the details that were hidden in the black. This will work very well against a dark background and the light background because we're not using a blending method, so it will stand out in either case. Of course, the best results come from using these tools together. So I'm going to duplicate my fire layer three times. What I'm going to do is I'm going to remove color matting into the top layer and the mid layer. The top layer I'm actually going to change to a screen effect. This has given us a much more solid explosion that really, really stands out and looks like it has some depth to it. And this even stands out against the white background, making the explosion look far more solid. So do experimenting using all the different techniques to get the best results. Now that you've managed to cut out that element, you're probably wondering, how can I really, really realistically composite this? 
I would check out the Action VFX tutorial for HitFilm right here. In fact, go and do it now.